What is poppin' YouTube? We are back with our third video this week. We are going to go over my top 10 wide receivers. Of course, one take Drake. That is our new saying around here, and we are getting into it. But first, let us hit that intro. Put some decent thought into these rankings, so I want to know what you think. Now, I, I, I had someone say to me, they were happy that I'd try not to do cookie cutter rankings. I don't just pull off of fantasy pros. I don't just pull off of underdog and kind of base my rankings off that. So, But I will say the first five wide receivers for me are pretty concrete, and I would agree they are pretty consensus. So my wide receiver one is going to be Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, what an animal, what a dog. Played with Matthew Stafford last year for the first time, and absolutely went off. Almost was like Calvin Johnson-esque, even though he is a slot 6'2 white guy who had had pretty decent fantasy football success with the wide receiver 7 and the wide receiver 30 points per game basis on two seasons before this. So no reason to think that, you know, we, we could have seen it coming. We should have seen it coming, but we didn't see it coming. If we, of course, slide our way over here into Player Profiler, let me make this a little bit bigger. We can see that he averaged 25.9 fantasy points a game. He had 191 targets last season for 145 receptions. 191 targets. That is absolutely ridiculous for 1900, well, 1,947 yards. The air yards is also crazy. The fact that he only had 1,590 but had more receiving yards shows, shows what he could do after the catch. What are we expecting from Cooper Cup this season? Well, I'll say this. It's going to be pretty hard for him to repeat being the wide re the maybe the greatest fantasy wide receiver performance of all time. Like Michael Thomas had a great season performance in 2019, but I think Cooper Cup it's going to take him it's he's going to regress a little bit. But what I've been saying, of course I've been saying this in live stream, so if you've been tuning in, appreciate that from you. But he even if he regresses 25%, he still was going to be the wide receiver one last year on a points per game basis. So that is exactly why I'm drafting him as my wide receiver one this year. And right after you kind of get in the top around pick three to pick four, that is when I would be pulling the trigger on Cooper Cup. Depending on your league settings, I might draft a running back over him just over preference, but I think Cooper Cup still has that elite ceiling, elite upside, and that's why I'm taking him as my wide receiver one. My wide receiver two is going to be Justin Jefferson. Now, Justin Jefferson has just been on a freaking tear as a wide receiver for his first two seasons. Of course, 2020 averaged 17.9 fantasy points a game, and then last year in 2021 averaged 19.4, which put him as the wide receiver four on a points per game basis. He was going like in the second round last season, like late, late second round, early third round. It was just a great buy for anybody that was drafting him there. I think he won a lot of leagues. So if we can see here, of course, last year had 167 targets for 108 yards for six, 1,616 yards and had 10 total touchdowns, 167 targets. So he really was not that far off from having kind of like a mini Cooper cup like season. So that's, that's kind of what we can see when these, and as a rookie, he demanded 125 targets. So what we love to see out of these early round running, uh, not running backs, these early round wide receivers is the fact that they are demanding targets that they are demanding volume. And that is exactly what Justin Jefferson is doing. They've pulled in the new uh, offensive coordinator from the Rams. So he has even mentioned in camp that I can see why Cooper cup, got open so many times and so hopefully Justin Jefferson has a massive season I can't put him over Cooper Cup based on what we just saw from Cooper Cup and nothing's really changed in his situation and uh, I think Justin Jefferson easy smash as the wide receiver two and that is why I have him as my wide receiver two in my rankings of course wide receiver three we are going to have Jamar Chase now Jamar Chase Bengals homer agree with everything uh, but he kind of almost outdid Justin Jefferson a little bit last season he averaged 17.9 fantasy points a game in his rookie season and you know, early in the offseason, last offseason, everyone was talking about drops. And for those of us that bought Jamar Chase, which I'll be completely honest, I did not buy him enough in the fifth round. I thought that was really just a little bit early. I thought, you know, if you get him in the sixth, that's good value. No, I should have been buying him in the fifth. I would have won a lot more money, won a lot more leagues. And so let us dive a little bit into what looks like the stats for Jamar Chase last season. He had 128 targets, 81 receptions. 1,455 yards, and 13 total touchdowns. Of course, I said he was the wide receiver five on a points-per-game basis. 128 targets. Imagine if this year, I know the Bengals, they got rid of C.J. Uzama. So really right now, it's really only T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd. What if the targets go up to 140 targets? 
he might be able to get a little bit closer to the wide receiver four, wide receiver three on a points per game basis. And that is exactly why I have him as my wide receiver three. I think very solid player. We saw the elite upside. And imagine if that connection with Joe Burrow that was so elite from college to the pros just gets a little bit better. And now that the offensive line has improved, maybe Joe Burrow has a little bit more time to throw the ball. And that's just all Jamar Chase needs to be able to get open downfield. So that is why I have Jamar Chase as my wide receiver three. The wide receiver four is going to be Devontae Adams. Now, Devontae Adams, he switches teams. He's 29 years old. Are we worried about it? Of course, goes from Aaron Rodgers to Derek Carr. He said in a press conference that he's going from an MVP to MVP. That's that's not true. That's not true. Derek Carr is nowhere near close to being the same talent that Aaron Rodgers is. But I do think there's something to be said about Devontae Adams might be the most elite wide receiver we have seen over the last three or four years. His route running is impeccable. And just because he is 29 years old, he's about to turn. When does he turn 30? Oh, he's going to turn 30 during the season. He is kind of getting up there in age, but there's nothing that has screamed that he's about to take that cliff. I, I feel pretty confident in him this year. If we look at the way that he played over the last few seasons, we will just see that he did average 21.5 fantasy points a game, wide receiver two on a points per game basis last season. Year before that, 25.6, had 18 total touchdowns that year. That was crazy. So I think he can definitely get around his last year numbers. I just think I'm a little bit more risk averse. And I think we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. He's competing with targets with Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, which there was a, there was an episode talk, someone talking about how Hunter Renfro might be one of the top five hardest guys to guard in the NFL, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, but I don't know if he's going to get 169 targets. I could see him getting 148, but somewhere around 140 to 150, but then he would have to get this ridiculous touchdown. And I just don't think he's going to score that many touchdowns. I think he's probably going to be somewhere around 115 receptions, but like 10 or 11 touchdowns. So that is why I have him as my wide receiver four. I just don't think he has the upside that the other three guys I listed ahead of him have. But I think he is a solid option, especially if you're able to get him right around the beginning of the second round. Um, I think Devontae Adams is a really great pick. and I, But I've been seeing him starting to creep up into the late first. So that is some of my thoughts with Devontae Adams. My wide receiver five. And you know what? I realized I did not grab a graphic for him, even though I had it made. But my wide receiver five is going to be Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs, we all know what happened two seasons ago when he joined the Buffalo Bills and absolutely went off with Josh Allen. He's being drafted as a wide receiver seven this year. He's my wide receiver five. And we look at the way he played. So back in 2020 was a wide receiver three on a points per game basis with 20.5. Last season kind of goes down a little bit with 16.8. But the thing that I, the thing that makes it ridiculous to me is so if we look at how he played, nothing went down between targets. He had 166 in his big season 2020, and then last season only had 164. So he dropped down two targets. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. He only had 103 catches compared to 127 catches. Like that's the difference between him being a top four, top three option versus what happened last off season or last season, not last off season, last season. So that is why I'm having Stefan Diggs still has the elite upside, still has the elite speed. He's everyone's getting worried about him getting all that. He's going to turn 29 this season, but from everything we've seen, the allow the route running still smooth, everything's so smooth. So yeah, Stefan Diggs, he's my wide receiver five. And that if you can get him in the late first, early second, right around that turn area, that's where I would be drafting him this season. If especially if you can somehow lock up, like let's say you get a late round running back. I'm trying to think like a Najee Harris or even an Aaron Jones, and then compare him up with Stefan Diggs. I'm feeling really good about that. My next wide receiver six is going to be C.D. Lamb. Now, C.D. Lamb is competing with absolutely no one for targets. I feel like I've been saying this in the, my Dynasty uh, talks, talking about C.D. Lamb, is that this is the make or break it year for C.D. Lamb. If C.D. Lamb cannot produce when he is only competing with Dalton Schultz and Jalen Tolbert for targets for most of the season, I know Michael Gallup's going to come back probably somewhere around week five, week six, but we don't know what full strength is going to look like for Malco Gallup at all. I'm going to be off CD Lamb, but I still have him really high in my dynasty rankings, and I'm really excited for this year because we look at the way that he's performed last year. So 111 targets back in his rookie season, and then last year had 120 targets, 74 and 79 receptions, six touchdowns, five touchdowns. He only got to 1,102 receiving yards last year. Now, why would I be putting a man that really hasn't performed over maybe some more proven studs that are behind him? I just think it's upside at this point. 
once you get past those top guys, like I want a guy that can be a league winner for me. And I think CD Lamb has that league winning upside. And we've seen the talent. We've seen the flashes. We we understand that he's a talented receiver. But when is that all going to be put together? I'm banking on it being this season. And you know what? If you come back to this video at the end of the season and say, you know what, CD Lamb absolutely stunk, I might have to eat back my words on CD Lamb. But I think it's an easy buy to be taking CD Lamb as your wide receiver six. So especially if you can be getting him around the 204, 205 mark, that is the perfect spot to be buying CD Lamb with all the elite upside he has. Because to be honest, I think sometimes CD Lamb might have the same upside that we're looking at with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. It just has to be totally realized, and it hasn't yet. And so that's why you're getting a little bit of a dip in ADPs and production compared to those other two really proven studs. But CD Lamb, I think, has all the upside in the world. My wide receiver seven is going to be Mike Evans. Did I say wide receiver seven? Yeah, that is going to be Mike Evans. I, The thing with Mike Evans, every year, 1,010. Just put that in your mind. 1,010, that is Mike Evans. Um, I, I love me some Mike Evans. I think I really loved him a lot more um, before they signed Julio Jones. Not that I think Julio Jones is going to be good. But I just think I thought, mm, Mike Evans, he's a solid receiver. And he was going to get all the targets from Brady. If we look at last season, average 16.4 fantasy points a game. Year before that, 15.5. Year before that, 17.7. So there's a lot of good things to be said about Mike Evans. I, I'm i just worried this year that Chris Godwin's going to come back a little bit earlier than expected, which I absolutely love Chris Godwin in Dynasty. Don't know. I have him kind of ten, around twenty wide receiver 24 to 25 for redraft. I don't know. Maybe I think I might have him higher. So don't, don't, don't put that on the Chris Godwin take. But Mike Evans is just such a good wide receiver. And so... I think he's a really safe pick, especially when you're getting him on that second to third turn, somewhere around the 211 to 31. I think that's perfect value to be dra- grabbing Mike Evans, especially if you can pair him up with like some of these next guys I'm going to mention. Like if you go two wide receiver, if you went like early running back, so let's say you grab CMC, Jonathan Taylor, Derek Henry, someone like that in your first pick, and then you come back around and grab Mike Evans and maybe one of these other guys, I'm feeling really good about my start to the draft. So Mike Evans, just man of consistency. He's proven it every year, so he deserves to be drafted at the end of the second round. And as my wide receiver seven, my wide receiver eight is actually going to be A.J. Brown, and somehow this did not get loaded into my streaming software as I was going, so no graphic, just get to stare at me. But A.J. Brown moving teams this year to the Philadelphia Eagles. He is 25 years old, and everyone's worried about, oh, He's not going to be getting targets. Oh, like, is Jalen Hurts going to put it together? Well, everyone's, like, hyping up Jalen Hurts. Like, Jalen Hurts is going to be a great fantasy quarterback this year. I agree. But if Jalen Hurts is going to be a great fantasy quarterback this year, like, his weapons around him are going to benefit from that same type of analysis. So why are we not pushing A.J. Brown? Why are we not saying this is the year? Well, well, Caleb, you're not saying it's the year because he's not going to get the targets. He's competing with too many other elite options. Okay, that is another fair assessment. But... My counter argument to that is, has this man not dealt with crappy volume before? Uh, played 13 games last year, had 105 targets. 2020, played 14 games, had 106 targets. 2019, his rookie season, played 16 games, 84 targets. Now, granted, I know last year the 13.9 fantasy points a game was not great. He was playing banged up quite a bit. I think that even though it was only a 14-game stretch, I think we can look at 2020 and see he averaged 17.7 Fantasy points per game, which put him as the wide receiver six on a fantasy points per game basis. That's exactly the type of man that A.J. Brown is, and he only had 106 targets. The man is an efficient monster. He had 15.4 yards per reception. Like, he gave you 1.5 fantasy points almost every time he touched the ball, and he dropped 11 touchdowns. I traded him in one of my dynasty leagues his rookie year for Mike Evans. I'm still I'm still upset about that trade to this day, but we're talking redraft. And I, I'm taking AJ Brown. I'm taking the upside. I, same exact kind of reasoning with CD Lamb is the exact same thing with AJ Brown. Maybe he hasn't put it all together in like a a elite fantasy football season. But you watch him and you're like, man, that dude looks like Terrell Owens. And that, I don't think that's a player profile or who they come to. Andre Johnson, pff, Andre Johnson was good, but I think AJ Brown has like an elite ceiling. Even though I know Andre Johnson was like a top five wide receiver for like three or four fantasy seasons, so I understand the dude was elite. But yeah, I AJ Brown. Underhyped, 
and he will be delivering this year in fantasy as long as he on a points per game basis. I don't I can't project how many injuries he might have or not have, but yeah, AJ Brown is a super solid option here coming in as my wide receiver, my wide receiver eight. My wide receiver nine is going to be Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel gets that big contract extension this offseason, finally solves everything. But my big worry with him is it was really only one year sample size, and they absolutely run Debo Samuel wild out there. And based on his previous injury history and everything like that, he deals with a lot of injuries. We look at 2019, he played a 15 full games. Okay, his rookie season, he was getting acclimated, only 12.5 fantasy points a game. The year before that, played set uh, the uh, last the year before this year or the year before last year so 2020 man covid that was a bad year uh he drops only 11.5 fantasy points per game because he only played seven games and got injured and his injury history goes all the way back to college with his feet he just never could seem to put a full season together and then last season puts an absolute monster season together we all know wide receiver three on a points per game basis 16 games 120 targets 77 receptions so could have gotten more receptions, 1,405 yards and six receiving touchdowns. I need to see if they give, uh, I don't think they go through his rushing. I need to find his rushing, but we all know that the man absolutely scores on the ground and that's where he got also a lot of points and a lot of other touchdowns. So I know the six receiving touchdowns, I think he, I forget how many rushing touchdowns he also had. So player profiler, you're giving me drop it, dropping the ball on this, on this episode, but Debo Samuel, I think he's just not going to be able to get to that same level. We're, we're playing with the injury risk, which I never like to do, so he does have absolutely high upside. I just think too much has changed. He's now has a new quarterback in Trey Lance who likes to run the ball more, so maybe we'll wait for them to get downfield. Maybe his yards per reception goes up from 18.2, maybe to like 20, if that's possible. I don't know if it is for him this year, especially with the fact that Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle are also there. I don't know. I just think until we see what Trey Lance can do, I absolutely love Trey Lance for fantasy because I think he still has that Jalen Hurts upside, but Debo Samuel, it's too hard to know. So that's why I have him like behind Mike Evans and CeeDee Lamb. I think he still has like the same upside as those guys. I just think I feel a little bit safer taking those guys. It's not, sometimes it's, like I said, I I play to win. So I think in a few leagues, I might take Debo Samuel over Mike Evans. I think I will. But when I'm making these rankings for you guys, and if you use my rankings when you're drafting, I'm taking Mike Evans over Debo Samuel. And my final wide receiver, so my wide receiver 10, is going to be T. Higgins. Now, I know everyone's going to say that this is my Bengals, you know, my Bengals hype coming through and everything like that. But T. Higgins, on a points-per-game basis last year, absolutely killed it. So if we look really quick, we can see that Debo Samuel, or not Debo Samuel, T. Higgins played 14 games, 110 targets for 74 yards, dropped six touchdowns, averaged 15.7 fantasy points per game, which put him as the wide receiver 12 on a points per game basis. T Higgins is now, of course, I kind of mentioned in the Jamar Chase take, now only have to compete with targets with Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd. Do we think Hayden Hurts is actually going to take a ton of targets? Joe Mixon going to take a ton of targets? I don't think so. I think Joe Mixon's targets will go up this year, but the offense is going to be more efficient, like I said. And the fact that this man is 6'4", 216, and only had six total touchdowns is a disgrace. He'll be getting closer to 10 touchdowns this year, just by the way that they're going to be using him and Jamar Chase. And I think they haven't necessarily deployed him in the end zone properly where you do the fades. So I kind of like they do to Mike Evans down in Tampa Bay. T. Higgins, I think, has all the upside. And I know if you've been watching a few months, I have taken Keenan Allen in some builds over T. Higgins. It's really close for me between those two. But like I said before, if you're going with the upside play, which when I'm making these rankings, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. T. Higgins is the appropriate play to go. So I just appreciate everyone for tuning in still. Appreciate you guys all being here, supporting the channel. We're trying to put out these content, putting out all of these rankings for you. Tomorrow we'll be dropping wide receivers 11 to 20. So make sure you subscribe and like the channel for that. And like I said, we just got to 52 subscribers and we're just going to keep grinding, putting out content. And hopefully you guys can join some of the streams, interact as we continue to get into football season. I'm super pumped for it. And I will catch you guys on the flip.